Okay, Jed, what's coming? Red Bull, double homicide, one male, one female. Killer's male, white, 40s. Agatha nailed the time frame at 8.04 a.m. The twins are a little fuzzy on that, so we'll need confirmation. Location still uncertain. Remote witnesses are plugged in. Stand by. Time of murder, 8.04 a.m. That is 24 minutes, 13 seconds from now. This is a Red Bull. Investigator from the feds here. Yeah, I don't need some twink from the fed poking around right now. The marks has moved a couple of weeks ago. Nobody knows where. Still searching for family and employer. Time horizon, 12 minutes. All right, what he's doing now we call scrubbing the image, looking for clues as to where the murder's gonna happen. Original running bond brick pattern, streamlined early Georgian details. When the precogs declare a victim and a killer, their name is embedded in the grain of wood. Since each piece is unique, the shape and grain is unique. The shape and grain is impossible to forge. I'm sure you all understand the legalistic drawback to pre-crime methodology. Here we go again. Look, I'm not with the ACLU on this, Jeff. Well, let's not kid ourselves. We are arresting individuals who have broken no law. But they will. The commission of the crime itself is absolute metaphysics. The pre cogs see the future, and they're never wrong. But it's not the future if you stop it. Isn't that a fundamental paradox? Yes, it is. You're talking about predetermination, which happens all the time. Why'd you catch that? Because it was going to fall. You're certain? Yeah. But it didn't fall. You caught it. Tell me how Shh. old. They're sleeping. Sorry. Tell me how all this works. The photon milk acts as both a nutrient supply and a liquid conductor. It enhances the images that each of them receive. We call the female Agatha. The twins are Arthur and Dash. We scan by way of optical tomography. White light pinpoints pulse along the entire length of the headgear and are reread after absorption through their brain tissue. In other words, we see what they see. Uh, you said the third prevision was what? Kind of fuzzy or no, something? No, the third prevision, Agatha's prevision, hmm? wasn't there. That's not all. I spent a few hours down there, and there are a dozen more cases with missing previsions. <coughs> you think we have found a cure for the common cold by now? It's stress. What's this? Herbal tea with honey. <laughs> That's not all. I spent a few hours down there, and there are a dozen more cases with missing previsions. <coughs> you think we have found a cure for the common cold by now? It's stress. What's this? Herbal tea with honey. <laughs> I hate herbal tea almost as much as I hate honey. Just drink it before I pour it in your lap. Can I get you anything, no, John? Thank you, sir. Jed, how come you're not out there with Father Whitworth? Uh, we were in motion on something. Now, from what I can see, we got a white male victim, about 5'10", approximately 170. And it takes a round in the tin ring and goes out a window. Red ball? Nope, brown ball. This one's premeditated. Amazing. Someone within 200 miles is actually dumb enough to still do that. Well, the victim's name is Leo Crow. This is case number 1109, time of occurrence Friday, 15.06 hours. Set so location, run a contact, search for future victim Leo Crow. Case number 1109, pre-visualized by the precogs, recorded on a hollow sphere by pre-crimes Q-Stacks. My fellow witnesses for case number 1109 are Dr. Catherine James and Chief Justice Frank Pollard. Good morning.
Good morning. Are the witnesses ready to preview and validate number 1109? Ready when you are, John. Standing by. Oh, I love this part. I've got no address, last known or otherwise. No tax returns for the last five years. Check NCIC, maybe he's got a record. Okay, now I'm inside a room. Window panes, aluminum extrusion. Two figures resolving in the room. You're not gonna kill me. Goodbye, crow. Chief Hamilton, what is this that I'm seeing? I'm confused about... Lamar, they found me. Is there any way to override the lockdown? No, no, no. No? no? I'll meet you anywhere you say. Well, you can come to my house, John. You know, I can't. They'll get me there. I'm not gonna get haloed. You can't run, John. Everybody runs. <laughs> John Anderson, Century 21 Styles provides gourmet cuisine. John Anderson, you can use a Guinness right about now. I could cut open your chest. It's damn cold. Don't worry. You see, I could cut open your chest and sew a dead cat in there. You would never get an infection. Not with the spectrum of antibiotics. I'll be shooting into you. That's comforting. But you do understand, I can't just give you new irises. Oh, please don't touch. Because the scanners will read the new scar tissue, alarms will go off, and large men with guns will appear. What was that? What was that? The alarms will go off and large men with guns will appear. What was that? What was that? It's, it's anesthesia. It's all gonna be downhill. You would sneak up on your patients like that? Well, you wouldn't break the hand of a violinist before the concert. Please relax. All I'm trying to tell you is that I'll have to remove your eyes completely. I know. And I have to replace them with new ones. I know that, but I want to keep the old ones. Why? Because my mother gave them to me. I know what you're thinking, John. How can I do what I do now? Well, let's say that I did spend an awful lot of time in the prison library. Now, that was a great way to avoid some of the more unpleasant aspects of prison life.
Thank you so very much for giving me the opportunity to get to know myself so much better. And now to return the favor. Hey. Hey. Rooms are 95 and 9. Plus Mind if I look at the register? Yeah, I mind. How about now? Help yourself. He's here. Anderson, leave. You have a choice. Walk away. Do it now. I can't. I have to know. I have to find out what happened in my life. Please. I guess uh, I'm not going to kill the man. I don't even know. Leo, let go of the gun. Let go of the gun. It's okay. Let go of the gun. That's it. Let go of the gun. You're not gonna kill me. You're right, Rob. Anderson, wait a second! You're a part of my flock now, John. Welcome. It's actually kind of a rush. They say you have visions, that your life flashes before your eyes, that all your dreams come true. I'd like a word with my husband. How did you get in here? Think about the lives that little girl has saved. Think about the lives that little girl saved. Think about all the lives she will save. You used the memory of my dead son to set me up. You used the memory of my dead son to set me up. That was the one thing you knew that would drive me to murder. What are you gonna do now, Lamar? What are you gonna do now, Lamar? How are you gonna shut me up? Forgive me, John. Forgive me, John. Forgive me. Forgive me, my boy.
Agatha and the twins were transferred to an undisclosed location. A place where they could find relief from their gifts. A place where they could live out their lives in peace. <laughs>